everyone. My name is John Sotos. I'm co-president of the Hellenic Initiative Canada and founder of the Sotos Law Firm in Toronto. Welcome to this event in partnership with the Canadian International Council. I would like to thank CIC President Ben Roswell, the CIC, CIC Montreal branch, and its members from all across Canada. Unfortunately, we just learned that Prime Minister Mitsotakis will not be able to join us. We know this is an especially challenging time for politicians uh, everywhere. We sincerely thank Prime Minister Mitsotakis for asking Greece's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Nikos Dendios, to step in for him. Minister Dendios joins us only a few days after the uplifting celebrations for Greek Independence Day the, at the beginning of a watershed year for Greece as 2021 uh, marks the beginning of uh, the Greek Revolution. Minister Dendios is one of the government's most experienced ministers who has held multiple cabinet positions during a very distinguished career. These include national defense, development and competitiveness, public order and citizenship protection, as well as justice. The Greek diaspora in Canada maintains a keen interest in what is happening in Greece, while also working very hard to preserve and promote its cultural heritage in a multicultural Canada. Greek Canadians are comforted by the fact that Canada and Greece share common values, but do hope for closer cooperation in matters of culture, education, and trade. We also support the return of the Parthenon marbles to their rightful place. As many in the audience may know, the Hellenic Initiative movement emerged during the Greek economic crisis to support the most vulnerable people in Greece. TH Canada does so through organizations such as SOS Children's Villages, Doctors of the World Greece, Prolipsis the Atrophy, and a fair number of other organizations. It's now my pleasure to introduce the host of the first part of today's event, Robert Peck. Canada's ambassador to Greece from 2011 to 2015. Ambassador Peck is an honorary director of the Hellenic Initiative Canada and known to many as a strong Philhellene. Ambassador Peck. Kiria Pourier. Minister, what a pleasure to have you with us today. I can attest that you are a long-standing friend of Canada. Some members of our audience today may not know that during your secondary school years in Athens, you were taught by two outstanding Canadian teachers. But before we get underway, may I first invite you, Minister, to make some opening remarks. Uh. First of all, the pleasure is mine seeing you after all these years. It's, it's really uh, a great opportunity. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you so much for hosting this event. And for me, it's a great honor to participate in this teleconference on behalf of Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis. I would like first and foremost to congratulate and thank the Hellenic Initiative Canada for its role in, of promoting Greece in Canada. As always has been the case throughout our long history, the Greek diaspora played an essential role in supporting our common country. Last week, as you know, we celebrated the bicentennial anniversary since the beginning of the Greek Revolution 1821. Given the constraints due to the pandemic, I was moved as any other alien to see the novel ways that Greek Canadians in cooperation with our diplomatic authorities devised to celebrate this great event. Lighting in our national colors emblematic buildings in Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver, Calgary, Regina and elsewhere showed how widely extended, enthusiastic and dedicated the Greek Canadian community is. 
But what really made headlines news in Greece, and I have to say all over the world, was displaying their national colors in the Niagara Falls. Furthermore, Prime Minister Mitsotakis attended last Sunday a special session of the House of Commons for our anniversary. He reiterated our sincere bonds of friendship and common values. He paid special tribute to Greek Canadians who are contributing greatly to both Canada and Greece. Our diaspora communities exercise a distinct form of soft power diplomacy, which bounds the country they live in with Greece. At the, very, at the very same time, Greece is emerging as a regional leader with a positive influence in the Balkans, the Eastern Mediterranean, the Black Sea region, the Middle East, Northern Africa as well. Our positive role is acknowledged by constantly more important global and local players. This is due to our geographic position as well as our ancient long dedication to principles of democracy, human rights, rule of law, and international norms. Our possibility to be an honest broker for many conflicts in our troublesome area is highlighted by a firm belief that international law would be strictly followed by all and our adherence to the principles of the United Nations Charter. Moreover, the long-term good relations we enjoy with most countries in the broader neighborhood has enabled a series of enhanced and multifaceted trilateral multilateral cooperation schemes. These allow a more effective approach to the many challenging issues in our overall region. I will not extend more since we have the possibility to analyze in the Q&A session. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Minister Dendias. For the benefit of our audience, today's discussion has two parts. The first, Greece in the world, and the second, a new narrative for Greece and perspectives from the Greek Canadian diaspora. Let us now move on to the first segment on Greece in the world. And Minister, with your permission, just some brief comments. Greek Canadians are very proud that Canada is one of the leading non-EU investors in Greece. In recent years, major investors such as Eldorado Gold, Fairfax and PSP have invested and shown confidence in Greece. World-class companies such as CAE Inc. of Montreal are keen to pursue new opportunities and partnerships in areas such as military helicopter training. And a Greek Canadian company, Cinespace of Toronto, has championed new film and television production. Your country boldly increased the Greek television, film and television tax credit to 40%, an important signal for the industry. And it is hoped that such measures remain in place, as well as support for infrastructure and training programs. And many that now many hope that now with a renewed legal framework, Canadian built seaplanes will return to Greece, first introduced by a Greek Canadian almost two years ago. And I know, Minister, we have spoken over the years often about that and your personal uh, experience with seaplanes. And we are very fortunate that our two countries are ably represented by Ambassador Mark Allen in Athens and Ambassador Constantina Athanasiadou in Ottawa. And as you mentioned last Sunday, Prime Minister Mitsotakis and Prime Minister Trudeau highlighted our two countries are like-minded on many global issues. Minister, my question, as the Minister of Foreign Affairs of your country, how do you view the Canada-Greece relationship going forward and what could give added momentum in the lead up to the 80th anniversary of bilateral relations in 2022? Well, uh, Ambassador, first of all, thank you so much for the question and thank you so much for reminding me. Uh, the seaplanes, as <laughs> we both very well know, uh, the first seaplanes line in, in Greece was between my home town Kofu and Paxos, uh, my home island. So I used to, to commute and I hope to see those seaplanes flying again in the Greek skies and, and uh, really help the Greek tourism and the Greek tourist industry. Now, uh, well, I have to say that, uh, first of all, you were kind enough to remind of the important amount of enterprises, of Canadian enterprises who are invested in Greece. And I have to say invested in Greece in very difficult time for them. And as you very well know, because you, uh, I still remember how hard you tried for this, some of those investments were difficult investments during an environment that was not easy at all for foreign investments during the years of crisis, 
during the times that uh, a government that was starting from the left governed the country. So it was not an easy time. And yet again, yet again, the Canadian enterprises were present and they tried to create jobs and opportunities in Greece. So that is important and that is greatly appreciated. Having said that, uh, yet again, there is lots to do. There's an enormous potential. There's an enormous potential for investment and there's an enormous potential of contacts between the peoples, regardless of the distance between us, regardless of the ocean that divides the two countries, because the ocean may divide the countries, but the value may create a bridge that is able to bridge even oceans. So for us, it is important, first of all, to help Canadians and Canadian enterprise to invest in Greece. This will help us enormously. The country during the 10 years of the crisis was disinvested. That is the truth. We need more than 100 billion of investment to return to where, you, where we used to be in 2010, in the beginning of the crisis. But more than, more than that, this investment would help the Greek economy and the Greek society move forward to the 21st century. And on the level of societies, creating a bond together, this is even more important than investment because Canada could be an example of the multicultural society in, in the face of the world of the 21st century. And I have to say the fact that the Greek diaspora has played such an important role in Canada could again act as a bridge between Canada and Greece. So we are looking forward to create a bond both on the level of people and on the level of business and use this bond to move, to go forward together. That is the message that Prime Minister Mitsotakis wishes me to convey to the Canadian audience. Thank you, Minister. Moving along, Greece has been long recognized as a pillar of stability in the Balkans, as a committed NATO partner. Greek diplomacy, particularly during your tenure, I might add, has seen an almost unprecedented level of activity since uh, the Mitsotakis government uh, came to power. Speak to us briefly about Greece's regional engagement, new alliances in the Eastern Mediterranean, and your country's engagement. So, uh, Ambassador, if I may say so, uh, I will go a step forward. Uh, it is not just alliances we, we try to create in, in the overall region. We try to create, uh, we, Greece, we, the Mitsotakis government, a completely different understanding. We try to create in this part of the world an understanding on a rules-based society. That's where we base our foreign policy. On the very fact that we have to act according to international law, according to the United Nations Charter, and we have to act in a way that creates opportunities for our societies to move forward. So that is what we're trying to do. We have solid results on this policy. We, for example, we have resolved our maritime differences with our partners, Italy, after more than half a century of negotiations. We're able to sign a delimitation agreement with Egypt after more than 20 years of discussions. We were able to find an understanding with our small neighbor to the north, Albania, again on delimiting the sea zones. We were able to create the Filia Forum. Filia, as you very well know, means friendship the Filia Forum between countries of the Eastern Mediterranean and countries of the Gulf to create a common understanding based on the United Nations Charter and UNCLOS, uh, the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, which is at the same time the international law. We have created a huge number of trilaterals with uh, the Republic of Cyprus, again, try to promote this understanding based on the international law. And last but not least, always, always, we have invited all the countries of the region, Turkey included, to be part of this new understanding of the region. What we do believe here in Greece is that the gunboat diplomacy, that power diplomacy, that invasion of, of countries, that sending mercenaries here and there, it's not the way forward. This belongs to a completely different era. And the way forward is exactly a way that is based on a rules-based society. We have to go from the law of the jungle to a situation in which countries 
work between them and cooperating between them based on the in, on international law. I think that's what's the way forward for everybody. And that is what we promote, of course, with our limited resources and knowing very well that we cannot change the world, but at least we can try. Minister, you've given me a very good segue to talk uh, about Greek-Turkish relations, which have been a major preoccupation for your government, notably in the recent past. Could I ask, how would you characterize the relationship today? And do you believe that the EU summit approach of offering enhanced cooperation with Turkey, while warning that there will be consequences should provocations continue, may ease tensions? And a related question, if I might, UN-led talks on Cyprus are planned in late April. Recent developments do not appear to augur well. Do you see any signs that progress is possible? Well, you touch, as you very well know, you're a very experienced diplomat. Uh, you touch on a very delicate subject, our relations with our neighbors, Turkey. Now, uh, well, I'm not bringing news to you by saying we had a very, very difficult uh, one and a half year uh, in 2019 and 2020, um, something that I have never expected when uh, the Mitsotakis government came in power. But yet again, that, that's, that was the situation then. And also we saw unique examples of instrumentalization of human beings, for example, in the effort to, to create migratory flows to, which would have broken the, the Greek borders in Evros and really let hundreds of thousands of people into of migrants into Greece in, in an effort by Turkey to blackmail Greece and the European Union. The, all these efforts have failed and due to a number of reasons, Turkey now has returned to, to a more, let's say, reasonable sort of, of behavior. There are no boats going back and forth in Eastern Mediterranean uh, for the time being, research vessels. There is no uh, sort of re aggressive rhetoric, or at least a very limited amount of it. There's an effort to start talking again. We had two rounds of uh, exploratory talks which have taken place already, and I'm flying to Ankara in the, fort hopefully I'm flying to Ankara on the 14th of April, if the current climate is still there. And we are having the discussions on the issue of Cy Cyprus on, in the end of April in Geneva. Now, is it easy? It is not at all. Has Turkey changed its ways? It, it's, it's very early to tell, I have to say. Although the economic crisis, the threat of sanctions by the European Union, the clear position of the new Biden administration, administration has created a climate for Turkey which would not allow the continuation of the previous behavior. But if that is a tactic or a complete change of strategy, if Turkey is becoming again a reasonable, rational player in our region, that remains to be seen. I cannot tell yet. Yeah. Canadians have a great interest in the Cyprus question, having had peacekeepers there for more than three decades. Could you offer any comments on the prospects, do you think, for these, these upcoming talks? Well, I would have hoped to offer a more optimist message. Uh, uh, the situation is not such that allows me to do that. Why is that? Because uh, the Turkish Cypriot community uh, is proceeding uh, in those negotiations with a position that is beyond the, uh, the international law and beyond the United Nations uh, Security Council resolutions. They advocate for a two-state solution. Well, a two-state solution is no solution, obviously. That is against international law. It's a step to the to a completely unknown. My hope is, and the hope of the Greek government is, that Turkey would understand that, and Turkey would apply pressure to the Turkish Cypriots to return to reason. And we, we could restart our discussions. When those discussions stopped in Grand Montana in 2017, and try to figure a way in which those two communities could live together and prosper together within the content of the European Union and with the full protection of the European acquis, which I have to say, it's, that is what would guarantee a prosperous and safe future for the Turkish Cypriots, not the Turkish troops on Cyprus. Minister, I know we could spend no doubt all day talking about world affairs, but uh, I'll limit myself to a final question before passing the torch to my colleague. 
But um, the notion of European solidarity is again being tested given the response to the pandemic and the ongoing migration challenges playing out largely in Greek territory. I noted that the EU Commissioner for Home Affairs was in Athens yesterday. How do you view the state of the union and where do you believe Europe is not realizing its full potential in terms of its citizens in the world? And where do you believe Greek leadership can contribute most given your country's own experience in dealing with the EU during the economic crisis? Well, this is a very interesting question. And even on this question, what could talk for, for ages? <laughs> uh, when, always when I'm talking about the European Union, with deep affection, if I may say so, uh, I'm comparing the European Union with monotheistic uh, religions, with the exception of Islam. They take at least 300 years to take root. Uh, the, the European Union is a unique experiment in human history. You know, a union of 27 states, which has guaranteed peace and stability in Europe for 70 years, which that has never happened in the history uh, of humanity, never, ever. And even just for that, the, this example is extremely successful. Having said that, there are so many shortcomings, so many difficulties for these 27 countries to come together and agree to address challenges in a reasonable amount of time, because also time counts. And this pandemic, this pandemic has proven that the European Union has a long way to go. But having said that, Again, one has to appreciate that for the existing standards, the European Union was able to have a common answer to the pandemic. Not a greatly successful answer, if I may say so. Lots could be said, but yet again, a common answer. And this is extremely, extremely important. And if I may be allowed to say, our government's position, the Mitsotakis government position, the Greek position is that vaccination is a human right. And as a human right, it is not limited to the citizens of Greece. It is not limited to the citizens of European Union. We have to offer help to anybody that needs it. That should be the Greek policy. That should be the European policy. That is exactly what we're advocating. We're not a big country. We not pretend that we can offer leadership. But I have to say, what we are trying to do is to do our part as a responsible European actor, as a responsible country in the 21st century. Thank you, Minister, for the clarity of your thoughts and your responses. And with that, I'm very, very pleased to pass the, the torch to a distinguished member of THI Canada and, and, and journalist, Katarina Soku. Katarina? Thank you, Ambassador Peck. Uh, Minister Dandias, I would like to welcome you too and introduce the second part of the discussion that uh, invites the perspective of Greek Canadians and focuses on how the diaspora may fit into Greece's vision and contribute to its future. Now, from the Greek Revolution to today, the diaspora has played a key role in bringing new ideas, but also its significant means to support the homeland in its aspirations. Uh, the Prime Minister has laid out a new narrative for Greece that is confident and outward looking and puts renewed attention to the diaspora as he has acknowledged that there is an opportunity to do more on that perspective. And at THI Canada, we are aware of the need to include the new generation in the discussion and broaden our reach to allow for an increasingly diverse diaspora community. To that end, we have invited two of our community's younger leaders to ask you a question from their perspective. So I would like to introduce the chair of THI Canada New Leaders, Natalie Livaditis, uh, to briefly share our work in Greece uh, and ask you more about opportunities for engagement. Hello, Minister. I'm originally from Melbourne, Australia. I now live in Toronto, Canada, and I'm very pleased to say that Hellenism is strong and prospering across the diaspora. The new leaders are a group of young professionals based across Canada who seek to develop meaningful ways for young Greek Canadians to engage and connect and support Greece. In our quest to foster links between young Greek Canadians and Greece in areas of meaning and important to us, such as climate change, we have developed mentorship and volunteering programs with Greek organizations focused on protecting and preserving Greece's natural environment. 
We are in the near future expanding our reach to try and support organizations in Greece which safeguard the interests of youth mental health, which is also of concern to us here in Canada, given COVID-19, as well as educational mentorship programs for Greek students. What measures, policies or programs is the Greek government putting in place to better connect the younger diaspora to Greece so that we can engage more meaningfully with Greece beyond tourism? And what else can we do to further strengthen our ties to Greece? Well, thank you so much uh, for, for the question. And I will give you uh, the answer on what we're trying to do. But first of all, I have to say how impressed we are with the Greek diaspora, both in Australia and in Canada, since you belong to the, both those very important communities. Let us be frank, the Greek diaspora abroad is our soft power. Uh, and for us, this is a huge advantage, a huge advantage for the country, a huge advantage for Greece. Now, we have a, what we believe is a long-term comprehensive strategy, uh, which includes enhancing the cultural identity of the Greeks uh, living abroad, uh, which uh, means promotion of the Greek culture through a number of activities and invests, including uh, digital learning of the Greek language. There's a platform, you may know it, it it's uh, www.stylinica.com, which is active in all schools in North America. We try to support the different networks of Greeks abroad in culture, sciences, business, youth and education. We're trying to support any cultural and educational initiative uh, abroad with emphasis on higher education. And we try to strengthen the relation between the Hellenic Parliament and the diaspora through enhancing collaboration with politicians of Greek origin all over the world. I have to say that the COVID-19 pandemic has not made our life any easier. Many things have to be done digitally, but yet again, the effort is there. And of course, what is of huge importance of us is preventing further brain drain, something that happened to the country during the crisis year, as you know, we have lost 500,000 young Greeks who had to go abroad to work, not by choice. If it was by choice, it would have been all right, but because the country could not offer them the opportunities to remain in Greece and prosper in Greece, we would like to create the conditions for all those young persons to come back to the country and also to create the conditions from anybody else from the Greek diaspora that would like to return to Greece. Um, thank you, Minister. And uh, we should brag a bit by saying that uh, the style in the cup platform that you just uh, mentioned was developed at Simon Fraser University or by our friends there at the Hellenic Center. So it's also a Greek Canadian contribution to uh, the diaspora and uh, to, to uh, Greek, uh, learning Greek for our students. So, uh, but I guess a wider question. Um, is, and uh, you would be um, uh, the best person to ask about this, is how is the foreign ministry adjusting to better serve and also work with the diaspora and tap into its potential? Uh, Canada, for one, is a vast country. So even as we cannot have uh, consular services, unfortunately, in every province, uh, we still need, the, and you still need, uh, talented diplomats on the ground to cultivate the great opportunities that exist here. Well, thank you for the question. If I will allow me an initial comment, probably I'm not the best person to answer any question. But anyway, thank you for the compliment. Uh, the answer on this is technology, technology, digitalization. What we're trying to do, and I hope that we will be able to conclude this in some like 24 months from now, is fully digitalize the ministry. Let us be frank, this ministry uh, was living in a different age, very competent, Greek, uh, diplomacy is well known for its results, uh, but yet again, on that front, we, we, we have not achieved much. We have not even tried. So what we're trying to do is bring the whole ministry and the services it's offered, not just to the Greek citizens, but also to the Greek diaspora, to, to the 21st century, so that the Greek diaspora can communicate uh, with the consular authorities through internet, and they would 
be able to resolve their issues, ask the questions, get their answers digitally. It, because it's not just Canada, let us be frank. Globalization has made the whole world one unit. So our diaspora, for which we are very proud, has to be able to be served by the Greek state. And that is exactly what we're trying to do. We hope we will be successful, but let us see. You will be the judge of this. Thank you. And talking about opportunities, let me introduce Basilios Tsianos, former chair of our new leaders, who has had many volunteering roles, including in Canadian politics, and most recently as the new president of the Hellenic Canadian Board of Trade. Thank you, Mr. Sobu. Um, Minister, first and foremost, thank you for your hard work and your service. Um, as, you, as you very well know, the diaspora is closely following it, but so is the business community, uh, both of the diaspora and internationally. Our team at the Hellenic Canadian Board of Trade shares your objective uh, in your pursuit of international economic diplomacy as well. Um, we are in an unprecedented pursuit of mobilizing the private sector from both Canada and Greece to increase uh, trade and investment between the two countries. In the case of Canada, we have indeed witnessed uh, uh, you know, trade growth uh, between the two countries as a result of CETA, the Canada EU trade agreement. But there are always new opportunities to pursue and new frontiers uh, and new goals to set, such as uh, er this morning's earlier ambitious plan that your government uh, announced. Could you share with us your ministry's longer term strategy and thinking on how to support Greek exporters for example, are there strategic industries that you are prioritizing? Um, what is your vision for organizations such as Enterprise Greece that are under your uh, jurisdiction? And have you, has your ministry considered the establishment of a Greek export development bank that would provide trade credit insurance to exporters? Thank you, uh, Minister. Thank you. Uh, thank you for this. Uh, thank you for this question. Uh, we, the Mitsotakis government, has made significant changes of how oh, this ministry is operating. Bef in the past, foreign trade, uh, exports, but also investments being brought in the country was the responsibility of uh, the Ministry of Development. Now, since 2014, uh, by the way, I was a Minister of Development then, uh, before the, we lost the elections in 2015. We were advocating that for all this to be efficient, it should come under the roof of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So, at the, as it is the situation in Canada, it should be Foreign Affairs plus trade. So, you have under one roof everything that has to do with, with helping your exports and also helping attracting investments. So we have done that, we have passed the relevant statute, we have created a new organization for the ministry, does not, that does not say much, but is the groundwork that had to prepare in order for this to flourish. And then what we're trying to do is change completely the culture on this ministry. We, what we would like to do is to all our embassies abroad and all our diplomats to become advocates for Greek exports and people who attract investments in the country. And let's take Canada as an example. Canada has invested in Greece more than, than a billion. It's something close to 1.2 billion. An important amount for Greece, but is it sufficient? Is it the full potential we can attract from Canada? The, the clear answer is no, not at all. Canada is a very bright and vibrant, strong economy, and we could do a lot more. And we have to work a lot more to attract Canadian investments. And if you look at that bilateral trade, the figure is less than 300 million per year. I mean, this is, let, let me be frank, this is a very, very low. Uh, so have we worked to, to increase that amount? The answer is no, we have not worked enough on this. We have not done our job properly in Greece because we need it. We need it. At, uh, if we are not able to export more, this country cannot survive the 21st century. So we have to create to, to create the tools, and that's what we are doing to help Greek exports going to foreign markets, Greek products to be able to find new markets. And it's not for the state to do that, but it's for the state to create the organisation which would help those people, help those enterprises to go abroad. 
As you very well know, one of the problems of the Greek economy is the very small size of the Greek enterprises. So if for any country of the world this is useful, for Greece is absolutely necessary. Most of our companies cannot do it by themselves. They don't have the funds, they don't have the know-how. And here is where the state could have an added value. And on the issue of creating a, a bank which would help that, we have already created something of similar to a bank in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. We could guarantee uh, uh, the exporter's revenue. This is something that it's an ongoing process now. I think it will pass through Parliament uh, in, in the next month. But thank you for this very interesting idea. If I may follow up, Minister, um, um, as Vasilios mentioned, uh, the Greek government today presented its National Recovery Resilience Plan, uh, aiming for a more outward-looking economy and uh, a growth-focused tax system. Uh, and it has already launched significant tax incentives to attract entrepreneurs, younger nomads, but also pensioners from abroad. A lot of diaspora Greeks have been disappointed in the past when trying to do business in Greece. What would you say to them, and uh, where should the diaspora Greeks turn to help them navigate the process of investing in Greece? Uh, and uh, what's the process of removing the remaining bureaucratic hurdles for investment? Well, uh, thank you for the honesty of the question. Uh, if I would say that the Mitsotakis government in less than two years uh, could have resolve all the issues created by the Greek bureaucracy over 200 years of our national life, I would not say the truth. But yet again, what I have to say is that the Mitsotakis government was able to modernize the Greek economy substantially uh, over those 20 months. And also by transforming, by reforming enterprise Greece, it has created a hub which could help uh, not only attract but guide investments within the country. And also, there's something that I would like to underline, that we are in the process of two revolutions within the country. The first is digitalize the whole public sector. So that will make it much easier to work with the Greek public sector. All this old tradition of big files and thousands of page, pages and document upon document being sent and turned back and etc and etc et we believe that this could be something of the past in less than uh, our current mandate that is before we complete our four years mandate and even more than that what we're trying to do is guide the greek economy towards a green future where an economy that would like to be environmentally friendly and an economy that is going to achieve that earlier than any other of our European peers. We're getting the call out of our economy, as you very well know, before 2030, before the European Union target date. And we are trying to work towards promoting renewables and Greek energy all over our economy, throughout our economy. This is a huge investment opportunity a huge investment opportunity for everybody that would like to participate in this Greek future of Greece. Thank you, Minister. And just a brief follow-up uh, on, uh, the, as a lot of diaspora Greeks may be tempted to think about the repatriation, return to Greece, either as pensioners or younger nomads, how smooth of a process can be expected? Oh. <laughs> well, we, we have to, and we're trying to, let me be frank, to put the red carpet for anybody that wishes to come back to the country. We need, we need human capital. I was talking before of this investment, that we need 100 billion and even more of, of new investment in the country. But even more than that, we need our brains back. We need the human capital back. The human capital is what makes a difference in the 21st century. And I'm not pretending that we Greeks are cleverer than other people. No, not at all. But we believe in the new generation of Greeks. And if to the new generation of Greeks you added the, the experience that these people have got by being abroad, by working abroad, by being part of societies that are, were more modern than Greece, then you understand what is the added value of them coming back to their home country and helping it go forward. Thank you. And certainly, uh, in a recent article in Catherine, the Canadian ambassador to Greece called the diaspora too, 
a natural bridge between uh, the two countries. And, and you did that just a bit earlier too. Uh, now, I would like to bring back our own friendship bridge, Ambassador Peck, for a final round of questions with you. Ambassador Peck. Minister, hello again. Um, as you probably know, Greece is an extremely popular summer travel destination for many Canadians, not to mention Greek Canadians. And I wondered if you could say a little bit more about the plans of the Greek government uh, to uh, open up the tourism sector, recognizing the very many difficult challenges around COVID. And not to put you on the spot, of course, but I think there are many Canadian travelers that are wondering when uh, there will be uh, some clear indication about the entry requirements for those hoping to travel to Greece this summer. Well, Ambassador, thank you for that. Uh, as you very well underlined, for us is of extreme importance uh, to open uh, our, tourists, uh, our tourist industry to visitors. We had a terrible 2020. I have to say that we hope that 2021 will be much, much better. Practically now, what we're trying to do, apart from a rigorous vaccination program within the country, which I have to say goes very well compared to our European peers, apart from that, what we're advocating on European level, because we try, as I said before, we try to have a common European answer to create rules that are the same all over the European Union. So what we're advocating, and we believe we will be accepted, is what we call uh, a green passport, a green certificate, which means that if somebody has been vaccinated, then he needs no test, there's no quarantine, and also on another level, we are preparing an industry to safeguard the health of our visitors. The Greek industry, after this very difficult 2020, is very well prepared to keep distances between people, to uh, uh, have to social distancing as a rule, but also understand that tourist industry is an industry that works towards relaxation of people, creating a nice environment for our visitors, not just put them in the room and lock them there. That's not the way forward. I think we, could, we will be quite successful. We are expecting to be able to start opening our industry, the tourist industry, in the beginning of May. But of course, that is only going to happen if we can guarantee the safety of our visitors. For us, human life is the first that we have to guarantee. Minister, just perhaps a related question. Uh, I've read that Greece has looked at the concept of, uh, of safe corridors with countries like Israel, perhaps with Cyprus. Is this perhaps an instrument that you'll be looking at more closely going forward uh, to allow and facilitate the, the, the kind of tourism that is so vital to Greece? Yes, yes, yes it is. And thank you for mentioning uh, Israel and the agreement with Israel as an example. This is, let's call it, it's like a tunnel. Because Israel has a very good vaccination rate. So what I mentioned before about this green certificate, under certain circumstances, could apply to a whole population. If, if of course, the numbers are right. Because you see, uh, we believe that government rules the country. But yet again, in, in the current pandemic, I have to say, there's a shared ruling between government and epidemiologists who always have a say. Uh, having said that, we hope that this would be something that will work for other countries, not just our Israeli friends. Yeah. Minister, maybe just to change uh, direction a little bit, to talk about parliamentary diplomacy, uh, a subject that uh, I had a great interest in, and we saw that last Sunday the, the Greek uh, Canada Parliamentary Association was very successful in bringing our two prime ministers together. Um, I wondered if as a very active uh, member of parliament yourself from Corfu, um, what prospect there is to see a parallel organization within the Hellenic parliament. Over the years, I think there were efforts to create a Greek-Canada parliamentary friendship a group, which may have existed and may not exist. But I wondered if you thought that this was a very concrete step that could be promoted uh, to build those bridges between our two parliaments and, and whether that is something that uh, you and, and other co colleagues in the Hellenic Parliament would entertain as an idea? Oh, of course. I mean, parliamentary uh, uh, sort of the, parliam the, the Greek Parliament and parliamentary diplomacy, it's something that we can work on. And I have to say it's a very useful tool and a very useful vehicle to create contacts between parliamentarians 
And in the case of Canada, this could very well work. And if you allow me in, in my double capacity, because I'm a minister, but also, as you were kind enough to remind, I'm also a member of parliament, I could also work on this. Uh, and I'm happy to understand from your question that there's a huge interest from the Canadian side. And I have to thank also uh, Canada for the great opportunity for Prime Minister Mitsotakis given to him last Sunday. For him, it was a great experience. And thank you so much for that. We can beat up on it and create contacts between our parliamentarians and COVID permitting visits between parliamentarians of the two countries would be very helpful towards that goal. Perhaps before I hand over uh, uh, the, the torch to uh, Katarina Soku again, I wondered if you could talk very briefly because there are many practitioners of diplomacy on the line today. If you could talk about um, how your foreign ministry has adapt, uh, adapted to the challenges of COVID. Some are very obvious, I know, but as, as minister coming in at a very difficult time, what has this represented in terms of the way you work and, and the challenges associated with that? Well, uh, this was a huge challenge for us because, let us be frank, Greece is not the United States. Uh, Greece has to have contacts with all the countries in the region and we have to have constant contacts. And there are many things that you could do through teleconferences, but not, not everything. So, uh, what, first of all, one of the things that the Republic did is vaccinate me third in the series so that I could travel around the region. But apart from that, we, we elaborated in a lot of keeping our lines of communication open with as many countries as we could. And I have to say, uh, regardless of the risk, we kept up the level of human contact uh, at, at the utmost. Because at this very difficult period in 2020, we had to be able to talk. And also, we tried and we, we succeeded in having the, the Council of Ministers of the European Union meeting in person under very strict rules, but in person. Because you being an experienced diplomat know know very well that contact is something that you absolutely need in diplomacy. You could do many things with teleconferences, but the backside corridor is where more issues are being solved. Minister, I just wanted to, to say that there will no doubt be many questions from some members of our audience today, particularly from members of the Greek Canadian diaspora. And I wondered if we can count on your good office uh, to take forward some of those specific questions that perhaps could not be answered today in the spirit of, uh, of uh, taking forward some of these ideas and perhaps some challenges faced by potential investors or Greek Canadians who are encountering difficulties. I, I think I speak for everyone in saying that this would be particularly appreciated. Well, if you're, uh, thank you, of course, and if you're brave enough, we can do this again. No? <laughs> it would be a great, it would be a great pleasure. I think uh, I will hand things over to Katarina to see if she has uh, a final question or two before we move uh, to wrap things up. Uh, Katarina, thank you, Mr. Peck. Uh, well, I would like to return to our new leaders, uh, and as they aim to engage an increasingly diverse community here in Canada, including those who do not necessarily speak the language or go to church to connect with Greece. And uh, this is a question we also got from our friends at uh, Simon Fraser University, by the way, with a, a few suggestions of their own on how to increase ties. Uh, but uh, Minister, how can Greece best connect with uh, and benefit from this multicultural experience of a country like Canada uh, and uh, more generally of the younger generation of its diaspora. We heard some uh, ideas while we were preparing this event uh, for educational exchanges for diaspora students, for summer language camps, for volunteering opportunities, even for a youth summit of the diaspora to be held in Greece. Um, what are your thoughts? Well, uh... First of all, it's, it is something that we should do, and it's something we would, should, we would work, uh, and we should work a lot more. As you know, there is an undersecretary in this ministry who has the responsibility of keeping, not just keeping the ties, the existing ties, but creating much more. Uh, undersecretary Vlasis is responsible for the Greek diaspora, for the Greeks abroad. And what we're trying to do is we're organizing, let's say, a huge, a huge reignition of, of uh, the relations immediately after this pandemic uh, has the, the challenge of the pandemic has been addressed. 
what we're trying to do is use the soft power we have in creating closer contacts with Greece and creating closer, closer contract with the, between Greece and the Greek diaspora. And if I may be allowed to say so, we're planning to use the Orthodox Church as well, the ties created by the Church. That is one of, of the lines of communication. But a part of what the digital age, the ability of teleconferences, of the new tools at our disposal, again, could help us create contacts. And also, we are planning to use our universities, having our universities create platforms in, with which Greeks of a young generation could participate in the everyday life and in the future of, of Greece of today. But of course, as always, uh, it needs to, to tangle. We will try to do our part and we we'll hope that the Greek diaspora shows interest toward participating in this. Thank you. And uh, with that, I, I turn the floor back to Ambassador Peck. Uh, Minister, I wondered if I could call on you to uh, to make a few concluding remarks before I turn to our co-president, Alexander Yoriadis, to, to wrap up the session. Well, uh, as, as you, uh, uh, Robert, as you are very well aware, the, the, my staff has prepared me two pages of concluding remarks, but I want, I'm not going to read it. <laughs> what, what I'm going to say is that for me, this was a very, very interesting opportunity. Uh, of course, I know that it would have been better for you if Prime Minister Mitsotakis was sitting here and you had the opportunity to talk to him as being the Prime Minister, he has a bigger view of what this government, his government is going to achieve. Having said that, for me, it was a great experience. And I have to say, please tell us of your ideas. It, is, it has to be a two-way road. It is very interesting and very important for us through our embassies, who, through our services, to know what the Greeks abroad and the friends of Greece abroad think, what they think we should do. And also, we are happy to accept uh, their uh, ideas, even on something that we have not done rightly. When we don't pretend we're perfect. We're only saying we are trying our best. So please be forthcoming. Tell us what we can do more. Tell us what we can do better. Tell us how we could we communicate better with the Greek diaspora and with the friends of Greece abroad. And let us try to create a much stronger bond with Canada. Canada could be a perfect example of a multicultural, successful society, a, a very good example for humanity. So better connections with Canada is something that would greatly benefit Greece. Minister, I agree with you. The, the possibilities are endless. And I wanted to again thank you for representing uh, the Prime Minister today. And, and please convey our, our best regards. I had the privilege of working with him both as a parliamentarian and as a minister, but also with you, uh, Minister, across, I think, all of your portfolios, but foreign affairs. And I came to appreciate your, your candor, your, your sharp analysis, and particularly your goodwill towards Canada. And uh, I, I still have this hope in my mind that one day, not far into the future, we will have the pleasure of flying on a seaplane to a certain beautiful island near Corfu together. Uh, it's in my mind. It hasn't happened yet, but I, I firmly believe that people are working on it. And with that, I, I thank you very much and turn things over to uh, our co-president, uh, Alexander Yoriadis. Thank you, Bob. On behalf of the Hellenic Initiative, uh, the Canadian International Council, and the 900 people and their families who registered for this event, I would like to thank uh, Minister Dendias for joining us today on such a short notice. Please convey our best wishes to Prime Minister Mitsotakis. We're enthused and inspired uh, by your government's plans for economic and social reforms that are so desperately needed, and your plans for rebranding Greece. We're proud that uh, Greek Canadian, our own uh, Steve Ranakis, now a board member of the Hellenic Initiative Canada, played an important role in this regard. 
As you said, during the darkest years of the financial crisis, it was primarily Canadian companies and pension funds that made significant investments in Greece. This has laid now the ground for Greek Canadian entrepreneurs to step in and become an important part of the Greek success story. The Greek Embassy in Ottawa, consulate generals across Canada and many Greek Canadian organizations have all played an important role in promoting this event. I would like to thank them all. One final uh, thought came to mind when I met recently uh, with the recently arrived Greek ambassador Athanasiadou. I asked uh, when was the last time that the Greek Prime Minister had visited Canada. It was Andreas Papandreou on March 29th, 1983. Almost to the day, 40 years have gone by. We hope that once this COVID nightmare is over, Prime Minister Mitsotakis will be the next Greek Prime Minister to visit Canada. And of course, Minister Vendias, we also look forward to welcoming you to Canada as part of your future international travels. It is now my pleasure to invite Her Excellency Ambassador Kostandina Athanasiadou, Ambassador of the Hellenic Republic to Canada, to close today's event. Thank you. Thank you very much. Kalispera Kiri Purye. I will never reveal my secrets again on, um, on the date uh, I gave you for the last visit of the Prime Minister here. Uh, I have a, a nice um, piece of information. I just um, talked to the Greek Parliament in Athens and they appointed a new head in the Greek-Canadian Committee of Friendship. So there you have uh, your first point uh, you asked uh, uh, in the agenda. But what a week, a week for uh, Greek-Canadian relations. Celebrations last week started on the bicentennial uh, throughout Canada and they were awesome. Last Sunday, we had our two prime ministers on a public uh, meeting and today, so quickly after that, we have uh, uh, the foreign minister, uh, Minister Vendias, uh, in this venue. I am delighted and uh, very naturally, I can say thus much will follow and I'm looking forward to it. A last point uh, on you, on the Hellenic Initiative. I can see um, through today's event, and it is a big event, uh, the distinguished role uh, you are taking over uh, for uh, uh, the benefit of our countries. It is a kind of consultative role. And uh, I deeply congratulate you for that, uh, and thank you uh, for inviting me to participate uh, to this event. Thank you very much. Well, thank you also. It was for me, it was a great opportunity uh, to talk to you all. I hope that this is not the last opportunity I'm going to get, and if might be a little more optimistic at all, so, I have the hope to see you soon, as Canada is on the list of my future trips. And if you allow me also to say, uh, I lobbied hard Prime Minister Samaras in 2014 to fly to, to Canada, uh, and it was programmed, if I remember well, Robert, it was programmed to happen in August 2014 or somewhere there. Unfortunately, right. unfortunately it did not. And as a last remark, uh, apart from thanking you all for this great opportunity, is uh, if you will allow me, Robert, to ask you to convey my warmest regards to Maria. Uh, as we have to keep the bonding with the Greek diaspora together, uh, we would love to see her soon as well, either in Greece or in Canada. Thank you so much for this great opportunity. Thank you, Minister, and to you and your family, and to Ambassador Athanasiadou and all of my colleagues at THI, for their great work in, in making this event, uh, I believe, a, a very, very good success. Thank you, Minister, again. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.